Hi, this is Philip with G6 Technology Services. In this video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We've got a mystery computer that I'm going to be taking a look at. So let's get started. And here's our mystery computer. So the reason I say that is because it looks like it was um, home built or not from one of the companies that we might be familiar with, like Dell or HP. It's just got a kind of nondescript case, and I don't see any logos on it. So this was brought in by a customer for recycling, and uh, I will eventually do that, but I wanted to just make a quick video on it first because I thought it looked kind of interesting. It's, uh, you know, obviously it's pretty old, judging by, I don't know how, the, how well the camera's picking up just how dark yellow all of this plastic has gone, but trust me, it's, uh, it's, it's very orange. So we'll just take a quick look at it, and uh, then I'll open it up and we'll see what's inside, and then we'll see if we can get it to turn on, or if it will immediately catch on fire. I don't know. So starting on the front, uh, we've got a big hole in the top where they must have had another drive, or they took out the blank plate and uh, lost it or something. And I don't know why this drive is set back so far. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, but it's it's back like in probably an inch at least further than it's supposed to be. And then we've got down here, oh, there's a floppy drive back there. That's, uh, I don't know if you can also tell uh, from the angles here, but that's that's back several inches. I don't know how that got shoved back in there so far. But we've got a floppy drive. And we've got our power and reset and probably indicator lights here some LEDs. And I'm guessing there used to be a flap that would cover this up, but that is long gone. And I've got a couple of USB ports. So what do we have on the side? Some ventilation, nothing else, and nothing at all on that side. So I'll go ahead and get it flipped around and we'll take a look at the back. All right, we've got a lot going on back here. We've got our power supply. And we have some PS2 ports, serial port, parallel printer port, VGA, more USB, Ethernet, audio. And then we have a graphics card down here. So that's a nice uh, bonus, not expecting that. I also have a sound card with, uh, I believe that's a game port. I've never actually used. That's actually a little bit before my time, but we've got uh, multiple audio uh, jacks there. Looks like a surround sound capable system. So that's uh, pointing towards this possibly being a higher end computer. I don't know. Um, that I guess that makes sense with it being custom built, that it might be a little bit higher performance than some of the factory built machines of the time. So let's see about getting the side cover off. And uh, I think I'm actually going to lay this down just to make it a little bit easier. So I'll do that and be right back. Okay, that should make it a little bit easier for me to get some better angles for you guys. So we'll go ahead. I have not opened this yet. So if you've watched some of my other old computer videos, sometimes I say I cheated and looked inside first, but in this case I haven't, so we're going to be experiencing this for the first time together. So I'll go ahead and undo these thumb screws. Okay, oh and I just noticed, tragically we're missing one of the rubber feet. Oh well. Okay, this is a little bit... Ugh, stiff. Hmm. I may have to get some uh, assistance from a oh, screwdriver. Nope, I got it. Uh, I'm going to be careful lifting this up. I see a couple of screws, so I think there may be a fan or a speaker or something right here. So let's see. Nope, it's just a shroud. So we'll go ahead and pop that off. Nothing really to see under there. Just have this little fan shroud. So I'll just go ahead and we'll put this over here. All right, and what do we have inside? Well, a mess, I'll say that. 
Looks like uh, something happened to our CPU heat sink. That is not a happy camper. I wonder if it, uh, somebody was working on it or if it just broke off somehow. Oh, it looks like it might have just come out of the clips. Hmm. I don't know, maybe it is broken. It doesn't seem to want to sit down in there. I'm not sure how that goes together. I don't see any screws. Hmm. Maybe, oh, there's a metal, there's a little metal bracket there. I think that might have something to do with it. But anyway, it's off now. So I'll just uh, set that on here, I guess. And I'll try to put it back on when we go to boot it up. Maybe, maybe I'll just try without it. I don't know, I don't have plan on having it on very long. So what do we have here? We'll just start with the power supply. FSP group, okay, model F300A, so probably maybe a 300 watt. Uh, let's see, 230 watt max, 135 watt, so yeah, somewhere around 300, I guess. Mm, yeah, it doesn't specifically say, but I guess if you just add up those two... Uh, numbers right there that gets you close and let's see what else do we have very colorful motherboard um, don't see any leaking or bulging capacitors so that's nice we have some mismatched RAM over here we have one just kind of bare stick King Max not familiar with that. DDR400, so this looks like it is pretty old. And then we have a nice uh, blue heat spreader on this one. I'll see if I can pop that out of there. No, oh, I don't think I can. This card is in the way. Um, let me see. I might be able to get it with one of these. Yeah, I got it. I don't think I'll be able to put it back in unless I can just push the stick of the RAM back in and have it close the socket on its own. Sometimes it'll do that. Mm, Geo, Geo. I have no clue. I've never heard of that brand before. Have you? 512 megs? Well, that's pretty respectable I guess for back then it's pretty pretty heavy well I guess we'll see what's what's going on with this other one I don't think I can oh yeah I kind of got it with my finger I just really tight up against this card you can see that too well but not terribly concerned about it all right, what do we have here? King Max 256. So, oh, did this other one have any other specs on it? Yeah, so they're the same speed, it looks like both. Uh, oh, look, there's a hologram. That's pretty cool, I didn't notice that. What is it? Looks like, uh, I don't know. A bug? I have no idea what that is. Anyway, it looks like they're both the same speed. DDR 400, 512, and what was it? 256? So, yeah, that's uh, an odd combination. I guess that maybe they had one of these laying around the house and it came with... It probably came with this one. Well, I'm saying came with, but it's a custom build, so I don't know if they built it themselves or if it was from a custom builder in town. But yeah, it looks like they added to it eventually at some point, because I doubt that a, a PC builder would put mismatched RAM in there. So what else do we have? 
Here's our graphics card and sound card with all these wires hanging over them. This is actually going to a fan. And the wires are all separate for some reason. Usually they come bonded together. Very dusty in here. Um, I'll see if I can get this card out so we can tell what it is. All right, got my screwdriver. I'll just take this, oops, take this screw out of here. And then we've got a little clip. Oh, how does that go? To kind of undo. And then it should lift up out of there somehow. Close these RAM things. The little tabs are in the way. This really is difficult to get to. I wonder if I can just get it. Okay, there. Hmm, how does this clip come out? I think it gets it from both sides. Did I get it? Hmm. Oh, there we go. All right. Hmm. This is a hundred and 28 megabytes, probably the video memory, I'm guessing. I don't recognize these model numbers. I don't really see any other brand on here. I don't know what this is. His, HIS, or HI8, or H18. No clue. Let's see what's on the other side. Oh, there we go. Right next to that giant clump of dust, it is a Radeon 9250. 128 megs of video RAM, 64-bit AGP4X. Oh yeah, is there a date? Home or office use? Nope. Serial number. Past quality control. Uh, I don't see a date code. If you saw one and I missed it, Leave it in the comments, but I don't see one on here. So anyway, that's that. So I don't know if that's worth anything. I'll check on the sound card next. This one will be easier to get out because it's not clipped in. Oh yeah, in case you weren't familiar with this, let me just show you what I was working with. That's the clip. That's got these two, uh, let me get a pointer. It's got these two little things here that grab, oh, drifted out of frame. These two tabs here that kind of grab the tail end of that card. And you just have to kind of release it. So, yeah, I fiddled with it and got it eventually, but I uh, am not a professional at that. So we don't really have that too much anymore. I guess the uh, modern cards have some kind of clip, but I, the ones that I've seen, it only clips on one side, so it's a lot easier to remove it. All right, and we've got Sound Blaster Live. That's what I was thinking it would be, Sound Blaster, because that's a pretty popular card. I had a couple of computers that came with one of those. Not quite this model, but... All right, let's see. Creative Labs CT4780. So there you go. Well, again, I don't see a date code, but I don't know, I guess, I guess early 90s. Oh, there's one. I 
if you can see that, copyright Creative Technology Limited, 1999. So there we go on this sound card. So let's stick this back in. All right, and then we got to put our screw back. I like some of the newer cases that actually have toolless uh, expansion card slots where they just have a little metal tab that folds over and then you can just clip it into place. That's really nice. get some of these cables out of the way. I also noticed there's no external power on this video card, so I don't know if that just wasn't a thing yet or if this was a lower end card that didn't need it. Let's see, let me get this aligned back in here. It's a little bit tricky with all these wires pushing it in all directions. Okay. There we go. I think that's in. Oh, there we go. And then we'll go ahead and put this other screw back in. I was thinking about just cutting out these parts where I'm taking the cards out and stuff, but that's half the fun. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you'd rather leave this stuff in or cut it out in the future. Alright, so we got our cards back in. Um, what is this hard drive and how do I remove it? Oh. What's this? Some kind of little bracket. It's this floppy drive on one side and hard drive on the other side. Lock, unlock. So I'm not exactly Sure. I so just oh no, oh, that's really easy. You just I thought I had to do something with this screw, but you just lift it up, and then hard drive just slides right out. That's really nice. Very well done. And we have a Western Digital Blue uh, IDE, of course, and well three screws to get it out of this bracket so I can get the specs. Should I do it? Yeah, why not? Um, yeah, let's see. Can I do it from up here like that? Or maybe I should unplug it and do it on the workbench so it doesn't go flying. Very messy case, though. Did not cable manage this at all. But I feel like that's typical of older computers. They tend to just throw everything in there. Well, I don't have enough room left on the mat, but I'm not really concerned about this stuff anyway. This is going to be a little bit tricky to do with one hand. I might have to... Well, maybe this will work. I might have to stop and come back after it's out if I need to use the other hand that's holding the camera. All right, got this one. We got two more. I guess they ran out of screws. I don't know why they put three. Well, it's better than some that I've seen where they just have one in the whole thing. Which I guess technically it doesn't need more than that anyway, because it's not really going to fall out. One is perfectly reasonable enough to hold it in place, but it just... I don't know, it just seems kind of cheap and lazy to do that. I prefer to just at least have one on each side. Okay, we have a 320 gigabyte Western Digital Blue. I don't see speed, rotation speed on here yet. Probably 5400. This bracket is really stiff.
Oh, sorry, that wasn't really in frame. I was looking at what I was doing. Oh no, I ripped my glove. Um, what do we have? October 2009. So, this... There's a lot of dust just flew up out of this. This was likely replaced, I guess, because the other stuff in here looks a lot earlier than 2009, so I would guess that they upgraded or the drive died and they had to replace it. Would be what I would think is most likely. Otherwise, I don't think it's very likely somebody would assemble this in 2009 from scratch. I would go with different components. All right, so let's get this back together. And then I'm going to... Well, let's, we can clean off the, uh, I don't know, is that too much unnecessary work to clean off the uh, CPU and put new thermal paste on there? Because it kind of came undone. The heat sink fell off. I don't really know too much of the history of this computer, just that uh, that customer wanted to recycle it. So it's probably been in storage for a while. I don't think they were actively using it. Oh, that was out of frame, too. You were looking at my foot. Uh, all right, well, this is going to be kind of fumbly to get these screws back in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that off camera real quick, because that's going to take too long. And just as a side note, I know now why this one side... Uh, let's see if we can get that to focus. Why this one side didn't have a screw in this one, because they mangled up the threads. So that explains that. So this side will only get one screw. So we'll get it flipped around and I'll put these other two. Those look like they're okay. Somebody really did a number on the other one. All right, got the screws back in. So we'll go ahead and stick this back in. There it goes, we've got this channel that it lines up into. Wow, that is really nice. I like that a lot. All right, we'll get it plugged back in. Get this big old thing in here. All right, now what to do about this CPU? Is there any chance that I would be able to get this to work again? I don't know what happened to it in the first place. This bar, like, here, this came off, I guess. I don't know how this is supposed to go together. Oh. It looks like there was another one on this side, and it broke off. See the top of that? Compared to the other side all the way across and the side is missing the top so yeah that's why so it's probably not going to sit on there the right way where is that other piece i wonder if it's floating around in here somewhere mm. i don't see anything no nope. i don't know maybe Maybe that's why they got rid of it. Somebody broke it and didn't want to fix it. Well, I don't know how you can fix that. Does that come off? Yeah, it's got screws. I guess you can get a new bracket, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'll just press it down, and then I'll just power it on when it's on its side, and that should be good enough just for the short test that we're going to do. Um, let's see. We got a little bit of dust over our RAM slot. So I'm just going to blow that away. Okay, and then we'll, oh yeah, I have to open up these little things again, and then we'll insert our RAM back into it, mm, not quite in there. Okay, that one's in. And we got the second one. 
So we can fish it through all these wires. Get that to go yeah, where it belongs. Come on, there we go. Okay, those are good. And then one last thing I wanted to check. There's this little uh, battery down here to retain, I guess, the uh, time and settings. I just want to pop that out and see if it's still good. I'm just curious how well these hold up. So I don't know how old this computer is, but I would assume at least that the battery is probably original because I don't think people really bother to change these. So there, oh, this rip is getting worse. Let me change that real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, good as new. So let's grab our meter and we'll just check this battery real quick and see what we come back on it. If I can do that with one hand, I will certainly try without like shorting it out. It's either not making a good connection or that thing is shot. Lithium battery, so I think it's 2032. I think it's supposed to be like three volts. So let's see. I'm kind of zoomed in, you can't really see. I'm trying to probe this. Let's see, hold that one up. Ah, flung it. Okay, hold this one on here. Touch this one over there. Okay, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Oh, there. Yep. 0 0.123 volts. So this is a dead battery. Well, I guess we can't expect it to last for 20 years however old it is. I'll just go ahead and stick it back in there anyway. Alright, back at home, even though it's not really doing much of anything. I don't know what the CPU is yet. It was covered in thermal paste, and I don't feel like putting it back on there because it's broken, and we're just going to take a quick look at this anyway, and then... I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. It's going to get recycled. I don't have any use for it anymore. Just clean up some of this stuff. Alright. So, let's see. We need a power cord. So... Here's a power cord. Okay, I'll get that turned on, get our monitor ready. There we go. We need our VGA for the monitor. I don't know if the onboard works anymore, if I need to use the external one. And, uh, well, I guess we'll give it a shot and see if it blows up or not. Okay. I think that's in all the way. Our power switch is off. On the back here. So let's see what happens. One, two, three. Well, nothing really. I guess that's good. Okay, will it turn on? Well, I thought about it. I'll try again. No. Nope. Hmm, well, it's not happy about something.
Oh well. Oh, that's interesting. I just noticed we've got Sataport. Oh, there's another one. Get my pointer. Yeah, there's one right here and right there. Hmm. Well, I guess you'd have to use an adapter. I don't see any SATA power in here. Is everything... Yeah, everything's plugged in all the way. I wonder if the CPU, like, came out of the socket or anything. I can try to... I should probably... Move that out of the way. Well, it is off. Okay. Just discharge it in case anything's built up. Well, I wonder if the CPU might have come out a little bit. Just take it out and put it back in. difficult to get to. Alright, there it's out. I don't know if you could see that. I was looking at what I was doing, wasn't looking through the viewfinder. So I'll stick it back in. Put the little lever down. Put our gimpy heat sink back up on top of it. And press it into place. Um, yeah, I don't see anything else. That would be stopping it from turning on, unless, like, the power button is not plugged in. I mean, everything looks like it is. All of our front panel connectors are attached. Well, let's give it another shot. On. And... Yeah, it spins for a second, and it doesn't want to do it anymore. Got no idea. I'm just going to unplug that monitor in case it's really messed up. I don't want it to send a bunch of inappropriate voltage to the display and fry it. Well, maybe it doesn't like one of the RAMs, RAM sticks. Try and remove, I'll just try and remove one of them. I'd be curious to see at least like what operating system it's running. looking at these headers to see if I can figure out which one goes to the power button. Oh, I see. It's this orange. I don't know if you can see that. It's this orange one here. is supposed to be the power. According to guide. There's on off should be on the top and then reset on the bottom and then the two LEDs on the other side. So that orange and white should be the power and it's plugged in. And it reacted when I pressed it. I don't know if you could see the fans spinning. We'll try the other button. Reset button. That doesn't do anything. That's interesting, the power button only does something the first time it's powered on after I had the power supply off. I don't know, maybe the power supply is bad. Well, I can try switching out the other sticker RAM. Sometimes if it doesn't like that, it won't turn on, but I don't think so at this point. I think there's something else going on and not really inclined to try and figure out what it is. There. Let's see if that does anything. No RAM at all. Same exact thing. 
like one rotation on the fan and then it stops. So looks like it's dead as a doornail. So that is the quick look, or I guess at this point not so quick look, at our mystery computer. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think if it was from a local shop or you think these people built it themselves, I don't know. Could have been from a shop and then they upgraded it. I'm not really sure. So I don't know what to do with all of this stuff, if it's worth selling it on eBay or if I should just bring it to the electronics recycling. But that was it. Just wanted to take a look. I just thought it was kind of interesting. We don't really see things like this very often these days. It is a little bit older. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions about this or if you uh, would like to leave a suggestion for something else to take a look at in the future, just leave that in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.